The following images can potentially trigger seizures for people with photographic knowledge. Viewer discretion is advised. I didn't click any of these photos and as much as I would love to give credits to these photos, I think I won't because I don't want to snatch off somebody's living but I'm still amused whether somebody can make a living out of these photos but that's besides the point, let's jump straight in. To be honest, I pulled up these images from Google Images by typing bad HDR but here's the thing, whenever you're working with HDR or whenever you pull up the shadow slider in Lightroom or Camera Raw, you might have observed this halo effect around contrasty edges. Whenever there's a contrast, maybe you have a building and behind that there's a very bright or blue sky, you see this halo effect, a white halo effect whenever you pull up the shadows. So today we're gonna learn how to fill up those spaces and how to counter that in Photoshop. So we're gonna talk about two ways to do that. One is the right way and one is the easy way. The right way works every single time. But easy way doesn't work every single time but if you know when it works, it works like a charm very quickly. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop with this beautiful image of Mustang which I downloaded from Pixabay. It's a great website for free stock photos. Go ahead and check it out. Alright, the website has not paid me by the way. Just to be clear. Okay, so as you can see, this is an HDR image and if you're wondering why my background is black, you can always change it back to grey by right clicking on it and changing it back to dark grey. This is the default color. You can always zoom in. Let's see. As you can see, there's a white kind of halo effect. Why did this happen? Because somebody increased the shadows slider. Now, we're gonna learn how to counter this. So, the right way. Okay, so create a copy of the background layer. Control or Command J. If you're using a Mac, Command J. Okay, now select the quick selection tool and simply select the sky. Okay, let's zoom in and just make sure you select the edges. Okay, just wait for the selection to be refined. Okay, whenever you're making uh, a selection using the quick selection tool, make sure you have auto enhance checked. This will enhance your selection after you make the selection. That's why it was taking time while after making the selection. All right, so this creates a fence. Okay, not offense. A fence. So whenever you are editing this area, this won't spill into the car and we don't want that, okay? So that's why we created a fence so that whenever we make this area darker, it won't spill out to the car. So for example, if you're painting anything, maybe with blue, this won't spill out in the car, all right? So all you have to do, you have to take the clone stamp tool, okay, and zoom in. You want to cover this with a color like this one. So we will sample from this area and we'll fill it up here. Now this is not easy. I'm going to tell you something up front. This is not going to be easy in the first time you might mess up as I messed up a couple of times, five to ten times. So this needs a little practice, okay? But if you stick around, you'll get it really easy, okay? So press and hold alter option, sample from this area. Let's make the brush a little bigger. So press and hold alter option with the right mouse button held on, drag it to the right to make it bigger. Okay, this much is okay, pretty fine. Depending upon the size of the halo, if the halo was small, you would have made the brush smaller. Now decrease the flow to 20. Now let's take a moment and understand the difference between flow and opacity. All right, if you already know, you can skip the video. So just for fun, create a new layer. And if you have the foreground color as black and the flow set as 10, watch what happens. This is not completely black, right? Let's make the brush a little harder. This is not completely black, okay? Now, if I paint a couple of times, let's get back, this becomes more and more blacker, okay? Precisely, if I paint 10 times, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, this becomes completely black because flow was 10% and 10 times 10 is what? 100%. All right. Now, opacity is different. If I keep the flow 100 and opacity 10, now watch what will happen. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, nothing happens. We are still 
in opacity 10%. The opacity of the brush, the opacity of the black color is still 10% no matter how many times you paint. However, if you click 10 times, watch. It becomes completely black. I think I didn't click 10 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It didn't become completely black. You get the idea. Opacity is about clicks. Flow is about the number of times you paint it there. So make sure, let's delete this. So make sure your flow is 20% or somewhere around 30, 40%, 20%, depending upon how precise you are with your selections. Okay? Let the opacity be 100. Now, Clone stamp tool, press and hold alter option, sample this area. Now just paint under this area and keep the brush halfway down the selection. Now when you paint, you'll see that this won't spill out into the car because we have created a selection. So, okay, that's not dark enough, paint again. Okay, now that's great. Take there, there. You can continue it here. Oh, now that's pretty much okay. Now you can take sample again from here and the great thing about keeping the flow at around 1920-ish is that you can paint several times to get that darkness. If your flow was somewhere around 100, what would happen is this area would become certainly dark, very dark, and this would look a little bit fakey. So, in flow you have much more chances. If it's light enough, you can paint again and again and again and again to bring more originality up to the point where it matches the other parts of the photo, other parts of the sky, to be precise about it. Okay. Now that's pretty good. Awesome. Now, I think we're pretty much done with it. Now, here it's okay. Let's look at the before and after really quickly. So, Control D. This is the before. This is the after. We are pretty much done with it. Okay, now this looks like a pattern. We might have to just cover it up. There you go. No, this still looks like a pattern here. Let's look at the before, after. Watch, it looks like a pattern. So, we might have to select the patch tool there it is, select this area and replace it with some other area, maybe this one, it's pretty good. This is strange, there you go and there you go, okay. Whenever you see a pattern, you can always retouch it again to remove the pattern, either using the patch tool or the clone stem tool. Now moving to the easy way, the easy way is going to be really, really easy and it's also going to be really, really accurate and it will only work when you have a plain sky, when you have a plain background, okay? That means it doesn't have a lot of clouds, it doesn't have a lot of shades of colors, all right? So let's jump straight in. As you can clearly see in this image, the sky is pretty flat. So this method is going to be applicable. The second criteria after having a flat background is that your edge, the edge that's meeting the sky or the background has to be hard. As you can look in this image, the edge is hard enough. Okay. There are a couple of trees, but that's okay. We can select that. But if your edge has a lot of trees, a lot of kind of furry objects, to, so to speak, this method will not work. Okay, so let's go ahead with this. So the first thing, always create a copy of the background layer to look at the before and after, also to be at the safer side. Now, all you have to do, same as the before, make a selection of the sky, use the quick selection tool. But there's a twist this time. Okay, now it is selected. Make sure auto enhance is checked. Okay, do that. Now, once it is selected, you have to go to the select and mask dialog box to select those little trees and make your selection more precise. Okay, so select any selection tool, rectangular monkey tool, elliptical tool, anything will do. Now, once you select those, and if you're using, this will only be applicable if you're using Photoshop CC 2015.5 and above. If anything below that, you can always use the refine edge tool. All right, let's go to the select and mask, click here. This gets you into the select and mask. This shows you the area that is selected. Now, currently we are in on black. You can always go to onion skin. Okay. So you can increase the transparency, but it's not visible because in the background layer, we have the same image. Okay. Makes no sense to be at the onion skin. So on black is really good. Okay. Decrease the opacity to see which areas are not selected and which areas we need to refine. As you can see, this area is not selected. So select this refine edge tool and just paint over this area. There you go. Okay. These areas were not selected properly. Just paint over them. Let's have a look. Mm, rest is pretty fine. This is okay. 
here we might have to paint a little. There you go. A little here. Okay, that's pretty fine. That's looking great. Time and again I have to look at the camera because every DSLR has a certain limit to video recording because my camera has 20 minutes so I just make sure that the recording has not stopped yet. Okay, so this area is a little good. Alright, we're pretty much fine with this. Maybe yes, these areas are left. Okay, let's do it really quickly. Okay, there you go. Pretty awesome. There are a couple of trees here. Alright. And we are good. Let's make a refine edge touch here. Okay, the selection is pretty much precise. If you want to make it more precise, you can take the time. We would not have to do this if the edges were really hard and had no trees. Okay, now we have refined the selections. Make sure you change the output to a selection and click OK. Make sure decontaminate colors is unchecked. Click OK. Now once you have the selection in place, we got an awesome trick to do. So let's zoom out quite a bit and select the lasso tool. Okay, now make sure it's normal. Okay, this one is selected and press and hold alter option. This changes into a minus lasso tool and just trace on the selection which is beneath it. Okay, are you getting the idea? Leave some space and trace on that kind of selection. You don't have to be super accurate, but watch how I do it. All right, just trace on the shapes of the mountains. And once you do it, you have to take a loop back, okay? The alt is still held, okay? You have to take a loop back and join the selection. Now, now this area is selected. Pro tip, if you want to move the selection, which is what we are going to do now, all you have to do, select the lasso tool or any selection tool, take the cursor inside the selection and simply move it. There you go. Now while you move it, you can press and hold shift button to make sure it moves in a straight line. So that's pretty good. Okay, that's something great. Move it away from the white areas, okay? So as long as it's away from the white area, it's fine. Now, this is too little, this is okay. Now what we need to do, we need to copy that selection onto a new layer. To do that, control J, okay? Now, are you ready for this? Control T. Let's move it down. There you go. Now, you might have to zoom in to see where it matches, where it meets the mountains. Okay, let's take it downwards, there you go, it has to fit properly, now it has fit properly, hit enter once you're ready. Now as you see, the white thing is gone, but this is quite harsh, you might have to add a mask. So add a mask, click on this button, make sure the foreground color is black, take the brush, decrease the flow to around 10 and make the brush a little bigger, make it softer, to make it softer drag it upwards remember and paint over the edges simply there you go it would be gone really easily watch okay now you can increase the flow if you want to fasten the workflow but if you want smooth results low flow so before after look how beautiful it looks right now okay so there you go. Okay, before, after. Let's zoom out and let me show you the before and after. So before, after. So that's pretty much it for this video and I hope you get rid of those ugly halos in your future HDR processing or HDR images that you create. So if you like this video, if this video helped you, make sure you give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. You know that. Click on that bell button so that you don't miss anything. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.